Let's be honest, at some point you want your own overlay. Something new, something custom, something that's not shared by a hundred thousand people on Stream Elements or Streamlabs. But how do you set that up in OBS? And how do you get your transition to be timed perfectly? Well, let's get right to it. My name is Barry Epps and this is Content Delta. When Stream Elements or Streamlabs are not handling your overlays, there's a few things that you as a streamer need to be aware of. One of those things is that you need to be aware of which format your overlays are in. Because if you have animated overlays in the wrong format, they will eat up all your GPU resources. Or perhaps you don't even know how to make sure that an animated overlay doesn't suddenly disappear and loops nicely in your OBS. These are all the things that I'm gonna make sure that you know after this video, because I'm gonna make sure that your your overlays work no matter if you custom designed them, got them on Fiverr, they will work on your computer. And if you don't have a custom overlay yet, do I have a surprise for you? Well, it's not really a surprise, is it? It's right there in the title. Today, Content Delta releases its first ever animated overlay, the high-tech minimalistic Voyager pack. It comes in five different colors, red, green, blue, orange, and purple, and can be downloaded from the website. While they are normally $5 per pack, I am going to leave a code in the Discord, a link is down below, where you can find it in the resource channel to get them completely for free. If you have any problems installing the overlays, then make sure to drop it to my live stream. I stream on twitch.tv forward slash mathmaneu every Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and I venture to answer your questions live on stream. And in the slim chance that I can't answer your question live on stream, then make sure to join the Discord where we are building an amazing community, including our volunteer gurus on hardware, software, event planning, and more. As I said, there's a link to the Discord in the description down below. Go check it out. Come join us. Get the advice that you need. Now, if you have your overlays at the ready, then let's open up OBS and get to installing them. Oh, and before I forget, at the end of the video, we're going to make sure your stream looks completely professional and unified, so stay tuned for that as well. To start off, we are going to set up your static scenes, which are your starting soon, be right back and stream ending screens. Most video files come to you in the .mov format, but what you want is a much lighter codec that is easier for your GPU to process while you are streaming, the .webm format. If you want to convert your files from .mov to .webm, there are many different options out there, but I prefer to use Shutter Encoder, which is a free, easy to use conversion tool and does way more than just going from .mov to .webm. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Converting is easy, just load in your .mov file, then go into choose function, choose VP9, set it to WebM. And the last thing you have to do before we start is go into the advanced features and enable the alpha channel. From here, you just click start function and it will go do its merry thing. It may not be quick, but the results are brilliant. Once you have the .webm files, like the ones in the Voyager overlay packs, or you've just converted, then go into your OBS and set up three scenes. The first one is going to be the starting soon scene, then the be right back scene, and lastly, the stream ending scene. In each of these, you can add a media source and call it whatever you want. I like to precursor it by the type of media it is, in this case, video. And then I follow it by whatever I'm actually doing. Well, I'm adding the Be Right Back video, so I'm going to call it the Be Right Back video. Then you just browse to the right video wherever you kept it. Then we click OK and we are done. Everything set up for that. However, I think I have made a slight mistake. Um, go into your properties and make sure to click the loop button because else, just like that, it is going to disappear. Next up, we're going to add the main gaming scene and the intermission scene. For this, it's very simple. Just add two more scenes, one called main and one called intermission. Starting off with the intermission scene, we are going to do the exact same thing we did before. We're going to add a media source and we're going to once again add a video source. Make sure to put this one on loop as well and then click OK for it to show up. Here we go, now we have to add our camera. And to do this, we add one more scene. This I will call the camera input scene. 
In my case, I call it the camera ZVE10 because that's the sort of camera I'm using. And then we get to add that. As you can see, it is very blanked out. That's because my camera records in log three. We will add a lot to that to fix that. Once that's added, go back to your intermission scene and add a scene source. There we add the camera input scene and we shrink it down to the right size and then just put it behind the big box. I prefer doing it like this because when I then add the LUT to my camera scene, it immediately copies it over to all the other scenes that are there. Meaning I only have to add filters once, which is great because I use loads of filters for stuff like channel point redemptions and I use my camera over multiple screens. This way I only have to add that once. To add the chat to the intermission scene, we are going to go over to the stream elements website where we're going to add a new overlay. It's going to be 1080p and we're going to add the streaming tools widget stream chat. All we have to do is make sure that our theme chat is set to custom and that the background color is not showing at all. It needs to be transparent. Then we go to the position and size and set it to whatever width and height is fitting for your overlay. In our case, for the Voyager pack, it's 500 by 800 and then click save and then copy the overlay URL. Then once you've done that, you go back into OBS, you add a browser source and we're gonna call this browser chat overlay. Copying your URL and then set your width and height to the same thing as you did for the stream elements overlay. Move that to the right place, shrink it or size it up so it fits the box perfectly. There we go. For the main scene, it is just as simple. Go into the main scene and add another media source, which we are going to call video cam border. Just as before, we're going to browse to the right file and just click loop. And there we go. Our cam border is ready. Size it exactly how big you want it. You can even drag the edges with alt click, which is a little trick that I learned very early in my career to drag it to the right size. And then we are going to add the camera scene again. Since we've now added the LUTs and all our corrections to the camera scene, we're going to add the scene source again, and we're going to add the camera input and drag it behind the box. And all the filters are set up as we want it. See why I do it this way? It makes life so much easier. And because you only have to add your camera once, you only need to change your filters once if you ever want to change the look of your camera a little bit. Okay, now comes the tricky bit because we of course want to have alerts on our main scene. Well, if you're gonna use your own overlays, you're gonna have to set them up manually in your stream elements. Okay, go to your stream elements page and go for a new overlay and make it the same size as we all did, 1080p. Then add the alert box and we will go through the follower alert. Everything will be the same for all the other ones, but you can just go through them at your own pace. Click the little cog and first off, we are going to change the video. In the case of the Voyager packs, there are animations for follow, sub, bits and everything else that you would want in your stream. Then add your follower video and in the layout, click text over image. Now the duration you want to set your alerts to be might differ depending on the overlay pack that you're using. In our case for the Voyager packs, they are 12 seconds long. And let's give that a try. Oh, that is not right. So we are going to have to figure out where the text actually is. So go into your text settings and into advanced. Ah, there we go. It has an automatic top margin of minus 50. Well, for us, for the Voyager pack, we want it to be on top margin 155. And then we're going to go back into the text and also change the highlight color to whichever color overlay pack you are using. In our case, it's the red one. So we're going to set it to red and we're going to try that one more time. Now that is almost perfect but as you can see the text comes in before the actual animation comes in and it does the same when it goes away again how to solve that is very simple you go into the animation settings and set the enter animation to fade in and the exit animation to fade out the one second duration should be perfect of course we can also change the font the font size the color everything that you want however this is just following the stream elements overlay maker so i will leave that up to you okay let's make sure this is centered by clicking away from the follower alerts going to the alert box clicking position and size clicking center widget and then put the top margin to zero 
At this point, we can save it and give it whatever name we want. Now that we've done that, copy the link again, go back into OBS and add another browser source. What we're going to do is the exact same. We're going to drop in the URL and we're going to change the width and height to 1920 by 1080. Last thing we have to do is to add a transition to make going from one scene to the other look good. This is simple but does require a little bit of timing. On the bottom right of your screen, click the drop-down menu and add a stinger transition. Again, call this whatever you want, then browse for the right video file. In our case, it's just stinger.mov. If you then scroll down and click preview transition, you can see A is the scene we are transitioning from and B is the scene we are transitioning to. You can see it switched from A to B far too quickly. To get the transition point right, you are gonna have to fiddle around a little bit. Note that this is in milliseconds and for the Voyager packs, we want it to be at 750 milliseconds. If we then preview again, you can see that it doesn't change until the screen is completely blacked out which means it's super easy for us to get to the b-side and back again last thing you want to do is click the audio fade style and set that to crossfade that way whenever there is a transition it doesn't take away your voice at all which means you can talk while doing it else your voice gets cut out and that's no bueno and then we click ok and when we then switch from the main scene to the intermission scene that looks super super smooth and just like that your obs is set up but you are not ready to go just yet look it's great that it all looks similar and coherent and looks very nice together but we are gonna have to keep your whole stream professional and that includes your twitch page luckily the voyager overlay pack allows you to do just that in the pack, it includes 24 different panels that you can use for your Twitch page, such as the About Me, FAQ, Socials, Contact, or even a Rules panel. And if that is not enough, it also includes an offline screen, so your channel on Twitch looks the part even when you're not online. Why the panels are so important is a topic for another video. We will go into a full deep dive on that at some point, but right now I do want to show you how to upload your offline screen. Okay, head over to Twitch, head to your account settings and go to channels and videos all the way at the bottom of this tab is the video player banner or offline screen technically here just update it to the offline screen that comes with whatever pack you've made oh and uh, before we click save and leave let's scroll back up and make sure that your profile accent color matches the color of your overlay pack. This makes the color of your sub alerts in chat the same color as that of your overlay, as well as the about streamer box right under the video player. With that all the same color, your brand is unified completely. Taking the time to make these small little changes is something which most people won't actively notice, but they will get that subconscious satisfying feel. So much so that if you do not do these things, it will feel off, it will feel wrong, and they can't pinpoint why. If you found this helpful or you were entertained, then make sure to go downstairs, click the like button, ring the notification bell, and click that subscribe button, or whatever is the correct order there. Anyway, while you're down there, leave a comment with what sort of overlay pack you would want us to make next. I would love to hear it, and we will get right onto that. And now that you have set up your OBS, you might want to figure out how to set up your microphone, set up a bot, get channel point redemptions, or whatever you need to do next to make your stream awesome. Either way, YouTube's magical algorithm thinks this is the best next video for you. So give it a click, tell me if it's right, and uh, as always, stream better, stream smart.